this little delve into what's available ready to run in 00 for diesel shunter locomotives. Big hello to you, I hope I find you well. I'm Jenny Kirk, welcoming you up here to Weir Yard. And today we're talking diesel shunters, one of my favorite types of locomotives. And you may initially be quite baffled looking at the choices that are available there, ready to run on the market. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look through what is available, ready to run, and just how it might be suitable for running on your model railway. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. So come with me and I'll show you just what is available, ready to run on the diesel shunter market and just what might be the best choice for your model layout. <laughs> When it comes to choosing a ready to run shunter in 00 suitable for whatever you want to be modeling, there's actually quite a lot of choice. And in this video, I'm gonna talk you through some of the different uh, ready to run shunters that are available that I have in my collection. Now, the first up of these is the class 03 shunter. And it is a model that uh, mainline and then replica railways and latterly Backman themselves actually had in their range from the late 1980s. That model disappeared in around 1998 when Backman uh, altered the tooling to be able to create the class 04 shunter. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, in this video. This particular model was released by Backman and is all new tooled and owes nothing to the heritage of that previous split chassis model. Incidentally, that split chassis model was almost impossible to DCC fit and ran like a bag of spanners uh, in a cement mixer, even when in tip top shape. So really, realistically, this should be the only choice that's uh, on your radar. And certainly DCC ready, with sound fitted examples having been made available from Backman, this really does make running these on both DC and DCC an obvious choice. And it's quite easy to fit a stay alive as well. Now Backman have done a number of different detail variants. And 03371 shown here shows off the witch's hat style chimney that uh, a number of members of the class were fitted out with. And this is available to be able to model these accurately. 03371 also sports the dual air tanks, which mean that this is a dual fitted locomotive capable of braking with both vacuum and air. This was produced as a special commission but certainly it's one which I was very pleased to add to my collection when the class 03 was retooled and brought out. And this would be at home in the various liveries that Backman have produced it in on any layout from the dawn of the class 03 back uh, way back around the early 1960s through to the 1980s and maybe touching over to the very early 1990s when they largely disappeared. And if you want to model the final example that outlasted any other members of the fleet, Backman actually produced a model of that cut down cab as well for 03179. This locomotive was originally modified to run on the Isle of Wight and it needed the cut down cab to be able to fit through the ride tunnels. It and its compatriot 03079 both received the modifications, although only 03179 has ever appeared from Backman with this cut-down cab option. 
With the dual air and vacuum braking, it does also sport the other chimney option in the form of this flower pot exhaust, and that is available from Backman across the main range too. This cut down cab roof, if we take and compare that to 03371, you can see the difference in the top, the front, and very obviously that difference at the back as well. It's unclear whether this cut down cab version would also be suitable to portray the cut down class 03 variants, which were also modified to be able to run on the Berryport Railway, which was built in the track bed of an old canal, and getting under those canal bridges left quite a low head height, and it meant that these locomotives had to be modified. Later on, they were replaced when class 08s were modified to be able to work that line, although, as far as I'm aware, Backman and Hornby, who do a model of the Class 08, have never offered the cut-down Berryport versions of that class. This particular model was a model zone special commission, and the only other version which was done for the Backman Collectors Club in its much later livery that it ran at Hornsey Depot in, are ones which do come up second-hand, but it has never appeared in the main catalogue range. Completing our trio of Backman 03s is 0345, and this is simply to show you that this is the non air brake version, and you can see it uh, doesn't have those additional air tanks on the footplate here, nor does it have the air compressor cabinet on the side, which, if you remember, you can just see there at the front. And that rounds off the different variants of the class 03. These locomotives ran far and wide and even appeared in industrial liveries as a number were sold on into industrial use, appearing places like Middlesbrough uh, down on the docks, as well as working for the NCB. The NCB liveried version has also appeared ready to run from Backman, along with an army liveried version that was part of a set and represented a number of class members that went on to work internal Ministry of Defence railways. The next locomotive up in our ready to run list is the class 04 diesel and this is one which uh, I talked a little bit about in the class 03 section. It is rumoured that Backman sacrificed the old split chassis class 03 moulding to be able to produce this, although it doesn't actually share a huge number of commonality of parts with the class 03. The class 04 originally was a much earlier introduced diesel locomotive built by the Drury Car Company, and uh, it was one which was made famous on the Wisbech and Upwell Railway, where it ran with uh, cow catchers and side skirts, and was the basis for Mavis in the Thomas the Tank Engine books. This locomotive has a split chassis and Backman has never offered a different chassis for these and certainly it's been absent from their OO range for quite some time, although it can be picked up second hand relatively cheaply. There are rumours afoot that Backman are going to be upgrading this, but we've seen no sign of that to date. Visually and aesthetically, it is quite a pleasing model, although it is a difficult one to DCC fit and even in perfect condition does run like that bag of spanners in a cement mixer. So definitely one which can't really do much with if you're a DCC modeler, although DC modelers may still find that these make a perfect motive power for your shunting layout. And indeed on railway lines such as the Derwent Valley Light Railway, these ran the uh, main staple of the trains there. They also ran in private owner operation places like the NCB, a number of ports bought them too, and a whole plethora of industrial customers, which I guess the most famous of which was Fords at Daventry, which had at least two of the Class 04 shunters painted in a light blue with the Ford logo on the cab side. There are no detail differences between different versions that were available from Backman, and they were available in a number of different liveries, including the rail blue with wasp stripes and the D number as seen here, although the tops numbered class 04 that has appeared in preservation was never done as a model. They also appeared in BR green with wasp stripes, 
and without wasp stripes, and plain BR Black too, and all of those can be picked up secondhand relatively cheaply. Expect to pay no more than maybe 30 to £35 pounds for a reasonable example, and be aware of the shortcomings of the split chassis design of the chassis. Moving up the tops classes, the next in our list is the Class 05. And this model is available from Hellion, and we have reviewed it over the years. It's been made available in different BR Green liveries, including with and without wasp stripes, also in a private owner livery as Bulmer's Cider Queen, and also in Rail Blue. Although it's never been offered as 05001, which was the locomotive that 03079 replaced on the Isle of Wight. And the reason for this is that it would have needed a cut down cab and Hellion decided that it wasn't worth the investment in tooling for what would have represented a one off locomotive. The chassis on this is DCC ready, taking a six pin decoder, and it's really easy to either sound fit or add a stay alive to these. And the mechanism that is in here is one of the smoothest on the market, making it a perfect slow shunting locomotive. So if you want a shunter that's super reliable, even down to slow speeds, you could do no worse than get one of these and fit it with a stay alive because it will be pretty much bulletproof reliable and will just be silky smooth as you shunt your wagons around. I've actually got two of these, this one in BR Green with wasp stripes, and I also managed to pick up secondhand the Rail Blue but with D numbered version as well, and all of these are silky smooth runners. The next up in this guide of what is available ready to run is the Class 07 shunter, again from the Hellion stable. Another silky smooth runner. This locomotive is actually my favourite, and I count that I've got seven of these, all tops numbered in rail blue. It's also been made available in the BR Rail Green, and it's a little bit unusual in that it had what looked more like the coach roundels rather than the BR Crest when it ran in green. It's also been available in the rail blue but with D numbers although these always seem to be a little bit of a slow seller and there are a number of private owner liveries being made available through Hellion either as main range or as special commissions and these include Harry Needle Railroad Company as 07001. Oakmore Sand Quarry in a very fetching white, which I can't help but think looks far too clean and would benefit from some serious weathering. It's also been made available in Peakstone Yellow as well, and certainly the Powell Dufferin blue and white liveried versions do look pretty eye-catching. Hellion have produced two different versions of the 07, and they tend to be available at the same time. These are with and without dual brakes. 07012 represents the without dual braked version. And as you can see, it doesn't have extra cabinets on the running board and no extra air tanks. The cab on these is really roomy and makes fitting a stay alive really, really easy. And I've made it a matter of principle to fit every single one in my fleet with a high capacity stay alive to be able to ensure that these are super smooth slow speed runners and that too would make them ideal for your shunting layout on DCC. On DC2 they run really well and with its directional lighting it really does look superb. I'm going to show you this version now which has the air tanks as well and this also includes the high level air pipes for shunting things like DMUs. The buffer beam detail is incredible on these, showing the whole host of different pipework that is available out of the box. On the running plate, you can see the extra cabinets on this side. And if I turn it round, we've got the extra pipes and this huge cabinet that housed the air compressors. And this may be a consideration depending on whether you run air brake stock or just vacuum braked or unbraked rolling stock. The real Class 07s were built for one particular purpose, and that was to replace the USA tanks on the Southampton Dock system. 14 of them built, and uh, 
most of those did survive through to get tops numbers, although rapid withdrawal did uh, see them off by the end of the 1970s, with only 07007 surviving at Eastleigh as the works shunter, where it still remains to this day. Although there was a lot of life in a good number of the other locomotives, and these were sold on to those aforementioned different industrial concerns that saw them last well into the 1980s and 1990s, and a good number have passed into preservation. Be advised, though, that one of the problems of this class was overheating axle boxes when run at their high speed of around 20 miles an hour on the main line for prolonged periods, so you would not tend to see these pulling trains any great distance. But as a shunting locomotive, this model from Hellion is absolutely astounding with its smoothness and reliability, and actually the model does not suffer the same issues that its full-sized counterpart did, and it will quite happily pull quite long trains along your main line all day, every day, without showing any signs of that overheating. The next locomotive I'm going to show you in this ready-to-run guide is of course the Class 08, nicknamed the Gronk. This was pretty much the most numerous and long-lasting shunting locomotive on Britain's railways that was powered by diesel. Introduced originally by the LMS, detail variants of those locomotives meant that when BR started producing their own, this was the Class 08 design using an English electric power plant. There were other locomotives that outwardly looked pretty much the same, although received different tops classification due to either them being the original LMS build as Class 11, or with a Lister Blackstone engine for the Class 10, or other variants including box pox wheels for the Class 12. At the time of filming, Hellion are planning to introduce a Class 11 and Class 12 bespoke model to the market, but they've not yet arrived and these are a special commission. Uh, but when they do, I will look at them with great eagerness because I do love my Gronks. This particular livery is the RTC as either the engine. Produced as a special for model zone, it's quite difficult to get and shows the class 08 with its 97XXX tops number that all locomotives in the departmental fleet got. These locomotives ran anything from short trip workings to yard shunting and really were the maids of all work. And there's pretty much no layout from the 1950s through to the present day that can't be improved by the addition of a Gronk. Both Hornby and Backman produce high quality models of these and in my opinion those are the two to go for with the Hornby model being slightly better detailed, but slightly harder to get hold of and a little bit more expensive. The Backman model really does hold its own, but it does have coarser side rods and a little bit less space inside. And while the very first releases were not DCC ready, it's very easy to hardwire them, and the later models are 8-pin fitted. The Hornby models are also 8-pin fitted, but natively support sound fitting using the TDS sound decoder that was produced for them, and it does make them really easy to fit. And that space also lends itself to putting a stay alive if you wish to go down that route, and they are faultless performers, of which I've got nearly 20 examples in my fleet. The number of different livery options, really, it just a case of if it ran in that livery, there will probably be a model of it from modern image all the way back. And the sectorization period of BR really did produce a huge host of different liveries and privatization added greatly to that. So really, there is a colorful livery to suit whatever you are modeling. The next model in this guide is the Class 09 Shunter. This model here, 09012, was produced by Hornby, and you can see the slender rods there that I was talking about when we were talking about the Class 08. Now, the Class 09 is a bit of an odd one. Outwardly, they look pretty much just like an 08, and indeed a number of them were converted from 08s, although 09012 is one of the original batch built for the southern region as an 09 from new. 
The whole point of these was that they were higher geared at the expense of tractive effort so that they could clear sections on the southern region much quicker. So these do have a little bit more of a turn of speed and that's made them quite popular at preserved railways. A number do survive in frontline service with operators such as Deutsche Bahn and it does mean that these again are also a really great choice for any ready-to-run modeler, being available in liveries to suit from the 1950s right through to the present day. Dick Hardy is in Engineer's Grey, and this is a livery that she wore in the 1990s, and the locomotive still survives to this day. We mentioned Class 11 before, and whilst Hellion are tooling up a proper Class 11 model, it's not the first time that a Class 11 has been made available, albeit cheating somewhat and just using the Class 08 tooling. This model came from Bankman as a special commission for Model Zone quite some time ago now and represents Basra, which was built for the Wart Department by the LMS and she ran at the Longmoor Military Railway. Indeed, she can actually be seen in the Great St. Trinian's train robbery at one point. The locomotive is pretty much a class 11, although it has to be pointed out that this model, if you do find her on the market, is essentially just a repainted Bachmann class 08. Although she is quite colourful, and if you're doing a model of the Longmore Military Railway, or at least inspired by, she is one of the many ready-to-run locomotives and items of rolling stock that have been produced over the years, either in main ranges or special commissions, that include this Class 11, also a USA Austerity 060 tank, Sir Guy Williams has also been produced, the Austerity 280, and a whole host of brake vans and coaches too, from a mix of Invicta models and also Model Zone. The last of the ready-to-run BR shunters is the Class 14, and this is a bit peculiar, because strictly speaking, she was kind of the crossover between the Type 1s and the shunters. Built to be able to run trip workings at around 45 miles an hour, she was pretty much a like-for-like -like replacement for the pannier tanks on the western region. The centre cab was uh, very forward-thinking to be able to try and give good visibility in both directions, although with the long bonnets, what they actually achieved was um, pretty poor visibility in both directions. This model was built by Hellion, however it has to be said that if you get the first production run of these they do suffer from a few issues including the counterweights that jam on the steps and all models suffer with steps that very easily part company, especially when you have to dismantle the locomotive to DCC fit it, although it must be said that Hellion have gone a long way to improve the locomotive on the second batch, and we no longer get the rods that bind. She now features a 21-pin decoder socket, which makes DCC fitting a lot easier, and the directional lights are now LEDs instead of incandescent bulbs, but largely the model is exactly the same as that first initial run. You could use these on a number of different layouts, either for shunting or for trip workings, and certainly in the Forest of Dean, these were a common sight on what is now the Dean Forest Railway before it uh, closed. The locomotives were withdrawn very early, probably the biggest failure of the modernisation and dieselization push that British Rail undertook. However, as being new locomotives with plenty of life left in them, a great many were sold on. Some were exported to as far afield places as Italy, although a number passed into NCB ownership, British Steel ownership, and a number of other industrial concerns. And uh, Hellion have actually produced a lot of these different liveries. And my favourite is the NCB Light Blue, which you'll be able to see it is certainly an eye-catching livery, although this is the rather unusual rendition of the BR two-tone green, with what looks to be more like a coach roundel than the crest of the time, and this is similar to what the Class 07s would have carried in their BR green livery. 
Moving away from the BR locomotives, the next up in this series is the Janus or Janus or Janus locomotive from Oxford Rail. This, for me, is one of the best kept secrets of the Oxford Rail range. At one point, you could buy these brand new for under £50, and they've got one of the silkiest smooth chassis that is available on the market. There's plenty of space inside the body, not just for DCC fitting, but sound and a stay alive as well. And they make a good basis for an industrial locomotive as is. Or you can use that chassis, especially if you're picking it up for £50 and under, underneath a great many of these 3D printed bodies that are available on the market. And at the time, I did advocate these as being a great source of some very cheap yet reliable shunting locomotive chassis. The model itself is well built, with plenty of die-cast metal. We've got these walkways alongside the bonnets with the handrails, very reminiscent of American practice. And these would have worked at a great many different concerns, from steelworks to NCB, or this, as it's shown here, in ICI livery, which would have worked at one of the many rail-connected ICI plants. You could use this for a fictitious uh, connection to BR from an industrial line, or indeed just build a completely industrial layout and use this as your shunting locomotive. At the prices it's available at, if you pay very little for it, it may even be a great opportunity to repaint it up in whatever fictitious industrial livery that you might like. And certainly the Janus is a really great locomotive and certainly well worth picking up if you see them at the right price. Keeping on the theme of purely industrial locomotives, Hornby brought out over a period of time a number of variants of the venerable Sentinel locomotive, which is probably one of the most iconic industrial shunting locomotives to have been made available in the UK. The first up of these that I'm going to show you is this one here in the MSC, that's Manchester Ship Canal Railway livery, as DH16. And the Manchester Ship Canal Railway bought a large number of these to replace its steam fleet. And these worked at the Salford end of the system and were quite a common sight even up into the 1990s. A number of them have passed on into preservation, including DH16, and at least two others as well that I'm aware of, although they don't run in MSC livery. The Sentinel locomotive design was one which is pretty much ubiquitous and you name it, the industry, if it was still rail connected into the 70s and 80s, probably was graced by one of these. The detail on these is incredible, although it suffers from the drawback that it needs a proprietary 4-pin DCC decoder if you just want to plug in and go, although it is quite easy to rewire it to give you a 6-pin decoder socket, and that makes it a much easier fit to a broad range of different manufacturers' decoders. It's all-wheel pickup, all-wheel drive, and you can see there there's, uh, the real locomotives would have been chain driven and these were the lowest powered of the Sentinel range. The next locomotive that Hornby brought out is the slightly uprated version of the four wheel Sentinel. And you can see here that outwardly the main visible difference are the side rods which transmit the power between the two axles. Looking at the underside, what is interesting is that this has a slightly shorter wheelbase, it seems, too, which means that it would not only be higher powered, but able to traverse tighter curves. The curves that these can go around are actually quite eye-opening, to the point where rolling stock might have struggled to follow them round, and these are perfect for minimum space layouts, where you want some really tight curves. Think about perhaps having the possibility of a continuous run double O layout in the space that you might normally have considered building an 009 layout. And you could really put an intensive industrial layout together, almost like a rabbit warren, using something like the Sentinel locomotives from Hornby. Again, I do love those front radiator grills and the Sentinel Sword as well, which really do make these locomotives look iconic. 
The final of the trilogy is this, the six-wheeled coupled version. And this was the bigger brother for any location that had heavier trains or gradients and just needed that little bit more. You can see that the styling is still very similar to those four-wheeled versions. And this particular version, again, in MSC livery, Manchester Ship Canal Railway, as number 3001, worked the self-contained Ellesmere port end of the system. And these actually lasted much, much longer working trains in that area, although have now all since been retired and moved on either to be scrapped or for other work elsewhere with new owners. There was a range of different liveries that were produced by Hornby and these can be picked up relatively cheaply. In fact, this particular one was recently on sale for as little as £70 from a number of retailers as part of their extensive sales. So really, it would be a great addition to any model railway, certainly to shunt private sidings or if you want a fully industrial concern. As an additional to this video, I'd just like to point out that I am aware that both the Class 17 and Class 20 locomotives have at various times been used as glorified shunting locomotives, but as they are still very firmly mainline diesel locomotives, they're a little bit beyond the scope of what I'm looking to show you in this video. And there you have it. These are all of the different variants and different types of diesel shunters that I have in my collection. Now, I must point out that the 48DS, which is a tiny little diesel shunter than we have reviewed on this channel but I don't have one in my collection at this time and it is available and if you want a tiny tiny diesel shunter then that is an option available to you. The larger 88DS is also forthcoming from Hornby and a Ruston and Hornsby PWM is also forthcoming from Hellion along with the class 11 and class 12 but none of these are currently available at the time of filming and I hope you really really enjoyed this little delve into what available ready to run in 00 for diesel shunter locomotives and I will do a companion video for showing you what's available steam wise but that will be a much bigger video and will come hopefully in the next few weeks and I really do hope that you enjoyed this and found it informative so please if you did tickle the like button and share this too. And you can also head on over to Patreon and help support the channel with a number of different tiers of rewards. There's something to suit everyone and it's a great way to help us keep making the videos that you want to see. We've also got our full merch store too, so don't forget to have a browse of that. And the Monday Club Pal Bricks have finally arrived. So uh, we've also got a link for them. There's a few left if you want to get yourself over there. 25 pounds each. It's the only single pack of the PAL bricks that are available and uh, it's certainly proving popular and I'm looking forward to seeing those appear on uh, people's layouts up and down the country. But until next time this is me Jenny Coates saying you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by... This is Clark Railworks, and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains, and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers, and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models, and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO, or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, but a special thanks go out to Anthony Kidson. Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, 
NI Railways 4000 class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papere, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, Michael Rose, Trains with Nick, and Simon Snow. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.